This is the Ionity charging setup at Cobham service station on the M25. So, could Ionity be the solution to Tesla and their excellent supercharger network? Well, it might be. Um, Ionity, if you don't already know, are a European-wide company that uh, is involved with several car manufacturers, and they have spent uh, a significant investment in putting these very fast chargers into locations across Europe and the UK, and the network is growing all the time. The best thing about uh, the Ionity network is it is future-proof. So these are 350 kilowatt chargers, and uh, as far as I'm aware, there aren't any cars at the moment that can take advantage of that, but it's, it's future-proof. It's there for when the, the battery technology is in place and the manufacturers are creating cars that can take that on board. So 350 kilowatts, if a car could actually charge at that speed, and you did three miles per kilowatt, that is, that's over a thousand miles in one hour of charging. So the idea behind this is that you would, you would drive here, you'd stop your car, you plug in for 10 minutes, and then you go, done. Hardly any longer than, than putting fuel into a car, maybe quicker. Um, so the concept is, is great. Now, right now, most cars, if you're lucky, might do 150 kilowatts on a charge. Um, certainly the Polestar 2 will do that. But as you'll see in this video, uh, I don't actually get 150 kilowatts, but that's more a car based issue. If you're driving something like an Audi e-tron, I've heard that they are excellent at pulling lots of energy into the battery quite quickly. So they can take advantage of say 150 kilowatts. But the big problem with them at the moment is the cost. If you are on a network that gives you some kind of a benefit, um, like like the VW network, I believe the idea behind that is that you'll get a significant discount on driving on these and charging on these these uh, chargers. But if you're not and you're as pay as you go customer like you would be with a Polestar, it's 69 pence per kilowatt, and that, uh, to be honest, is it's just not worth using them um, at that price. Like you're you're lucky to get three miles per kilowatt, and uh, that's going to put your cost at like 23 pence per mile. Now, the average diesel car, you're looking at 15 pence per mile. So you've got to spend significantly more than if you were driving diesel or petrol. And that is not the idea behind having an electric car. The idea is to, you know, driving comfort, performance, environment, and cost of, of your mileage. The idea is to save money, not spend more. So if you need to use these in an emergency, then yeah, by all means do it. And I thought I'd try them out just to see what it's like. So here we go um, and have a look and we'll see what it's like charging on the Ionity charger. Okay, so just before we get started, you can see here, we arrived with exactly 20% battery in a range of 35 miles. So we're gonna see what kind of uh, charging speed we get when we're um, running on the Ionity charger. Okay, so let's, uh, let's get this charging started. I'll pop open the hatch on the car. Okay, so the charge successfully initiated on my phone, so let's get plugged in. Oh, these cables are always like this. It's so hard to hold the camera and do the cable at the same time. So I'm just going to pop that down, open up this hatch, see if I can get the cable in while holding the camera at the same time. Not easy. All right, hold it in place. And uh, this is the issue sometimes people have is this handshake thing. So I'm going to hold it and see if that, uh, that helps. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to do something else. Okay, let's try all of that again. So, not successful the first time. So, we're on number, let's see, 410702. 410702. Okay, charge now. So maybe it was just because I took too long to get it connected. So, that's it. We want to pay with paper like we did before. And uh, hopefully that will authorize. Okay, so it says, Initiating the charging. The charging session was successfully initiated. Okay, so preparing to charge, setting up communication with the car. All right, let's plug in. Maybe we're supposed to plug in first, but that's not normally what I've done. Oh, these things, so difficult to plug in. Right, there we go. Let's plug in and hold. And let's see if that works. Nothing yet. What does it say on the screen? Okay, preparing to charge, setting up communication with the car. Okay, I should probably continue to hold it just to make sure that that doesn't fall down at all. There we go, it's gone green. So it takes a bit of time, that's something to be aware of. And it's worth holding it just to see what happens. 
Okay, so we're now looking at uh, charging at 19%. Hopefully you can see the display there. Currently 20 kilowatts. And uh, we'll, we'll let it run for a little bit and see what it ramps up to. There we go, we've got 35. Keep watching. Come back in a minute and see what it's got uh, once it's fully up and running. Okay, so we've been charging for, uh, what does it say, five minutes now. We've, we've taken just three kilowatts. Uh, painful. So you can see on the screen here that it's, um, it's showing 36 kilowatts still. I don't think that's normal. So I'm going to move the car and try one of the other chargers and see if we get anything better than that. Very slow charge speed. So I don't know if that's the charger or if that's just uh, the car, but I'm pretty sure it shouldn't be that slow. So let's uh, turn around and try one of the other ones. There's like... I think six chargers here and uh, no one else is using them. So that doesn't surprise me. I mean, you can just go down to the other ed end of the car park here and use the Ecotricity charger and pay 30 pence there. It's much cheaper. And uh, it, apparently the that particular Ecotricity charger is working at the moment. There's two of them there. So I think that's generally where most people are going. But uh, yeah, let's let's try another one. I've turned the car around. Let's plug into this one. Preparing to set up car. Okay, that's good. One thing they could do is make the screen a little bit uh, brighter. Uh, let's pop this open, get that out of there and see if we can get this cable in more easily. All right. Uh, this one's not quite as stiff as the other ones. That's good. Okay, let's hold it and wait for it to initialize. Really slow to get something happening here. Oh, there we go, gone green. So back on the, the pump now, 23% battery's out. And let's see what kind of charge speed we get. Okay, 27 kilowatts. 48, so oh, that's, that's better. So that indicates to me it might have been the other, the other pump. Okay, so we hit some decent charging speed now. Look, 280 miles an hour, 85, 89. So this rarely has ramped up. Um, I'll drop down a bit there. Yeah, and then now that, now that we've hit 37%, so we've reached 262 miles per hour, it's saying, on the charger there. Let's have a look at um, what we get on the, on the display on the Ionity station. So, 108 kilowatts, so, oh, 87. Well, maybe that's because I opened the door, I'm not sure. 38%, let's try uh, closing the door. Ninety-one, so settle on 91. So I'm not the only person charging here now, uh, it's BMW i3. It's trying to uh, charge the Ionity charger. It's cool. Okay, uh, settled down at 93 kilowatts, 39% charge. Okay, so actually we're uh, we're hitting our peak on our charge here at 50%. So far, 105 kilowatts, which is uh, not too bad. It's a little bit better. So after charging up to 50%, the BMW i3 driver was uh, telling me that he has been able to charge a little bit for free on some of these Ionity chargers here. And uh, the one he plugged into, it just started without having to be authorized. So I thought I would move, uh, he, he was done, so I thought I would move over and give that a try. So uh, let's see if we can uh, get a free charge from this one. I wish these cables weren't so difficult to plug in. That's um, always difficult to do. Right, start on the screen. Preparing to charge, setting up community. Yeah, it looks like this one, <laughs> nice. That's what I like to see, free charging. 108 kilowatts, 109, looking good. So 81, 81 kilowatts now. Okay, so as we've reached 60% now um, on the charging, I think uh, it's time to go and get some food. So this is typically when we start to see it slow down on, on a lot of cars, but yeah, like the Polestar cannot accelerate at its maximum charging speed all the way up to 80%. So 
we're going to leave it for a little bit as it's free on ionity at the moment um that's a bonus i'm going to leave it to charge if i was paying then uh, you got to you got to think about where what are you doing now so the current range is 120 miles well it's only about 40 or 50 miles for me to get where i need to go so and that's home and i can charge more at home there'd be no point in spending money charging here and wasting time if i need to get where i'm going so uh, that's what I would do. I'd leave, but uh, as it's free, I'm going to just stay for a few minutes and get something to eat and then uh, come back and see how much, much charge we've got before I head home. You can see what I mean now as we've got uh, up to 60% now, the charge speed has dropped down significantly to 67 kilowatts. Okay, so I'm back at the car now. I went inside, grabbed some food and uh, it's now up to 80%. And uh, yeah, we're getting 48 kilowatts, so slow down a lot, as you'd expect it to do once you reach 80%. And uh, I'm going to stay here and eat a little bit and uh, just see what kind of charging speed we get for the last little section of the charge once we get above 80%. So if we just um, do a very quick calculation, and that's one of the problems with the Polestar, the display doesn't show what you're actually, um, what that's based on. So um charging speed 110 miles an hour is that 110 miles of motorway driving is that average trip driving where does that come from so say say it's 47 kilowatts is taking on board and it's, if it's say 90 percent efficiency 42.3 going into the battery um 109 divided by 42.3 is 2.57 so what it seems to be displaying there is around 2.58 2.6 miles per kilowatt to be honest, that, that seems fairly reasonable because getting three miles um, is a little tricky on this car. You can get it on um, like the Nissan Leaf. I, I was averaging over that. Um, it's, it's light, it's efficient, um, and it doesn't use a great deal of energy. But this car, I think 2.6 seems seems like a realistic figure. So that's, that's interesting that that's roughly what it works out as. Okay, 85, well, nearly 85%, 84%, 29 kilowatts. And that's the speed we're getting. So it's really slow now, not really worth staying here, to be honest. It's so I finished charging pretty much. I mean, we're down at 14 kilowatts now at uh, 87%. So as I mean, if there's, unless you're here for some reason and you're, you're having some food and you're, you're hanging around, there's not much point staying because you can uh, get some decent charging speed at home. So it, it's pretty pointless to stay above that level. So I'm gonna finish the charge now and head off. Okay, so yeah, that was my first time using an Ionity charger. And as you can see from the video, it wasn't necessarily an easy experience all the time. Um, and I found this to be one of the problems with electric charging. Once you know what you're doing with different networks, then you get used to it. But if you are not familiar with the app or the setup or whether the charge is broken or whether or not your car is not getting the, the correct speed, that takes a bit of getting used to. So I think that's one of the reasons why sometimes journalists and and writers don't always warm immediately to electric cars until you get used to it 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 does it's a different way of thinking and you have to be a little bit adaptable so yeah in terms of charging experience yeah these chargers work really well the app works fine and uh we got a fairly decent speed of charge but it was very similar to the bp charge master um 150 kilowatt that we used and as i said at the beginning of the video these chargers are future proofed um, they they will rarely come into their own, I think, in the future. And if you're, you're traveling across Europe, you know that there's a network of these that you could rely on. The big factor that is going to be an issue for many users is the cost. I think it's really unfortunate that they've priced it so high. I, I get that it's because they are looking after those customers who are parts of the dealer network and the, the manufacturer network that are going to benefit from the discounts. And then that will probably discourage other car users from blocking up these spaces and charging. But it means it's more expensive than the whole Tesla network. And it would have been really nice to see a company come together that would provide that kind of charging um, and make it a, a level playing field or at least a similar price or a reasonable price for everyone. So it wasn't significantly more than using fuel. 69 pence per kilowatt is just too expensive. If you if you need to use these in an emergency and it's convenient, then then I'd say go for it. But have a look at this. This is a this is that map, and this shows you all of the 50 kilowatt rapid chargers in this area. And you can see from that that there are other options. So 
even at this particular location, there's there are two eco-tricity chargers. And uh, yes, they're 50 kilowatts. Um, they might not always work. That's sometimes one of the problems with eco-tricity, but they're 30 pence to use or 15 pence if you're an eco-tricity customer. And that is a lot cheaper. Um, so yes, it's gonna charge a little bit slower, but as we saw on the Polestar, you only get that peak 100, 105 kilowatt charge for a small section of the charge and then it drops down. So yes, you could charge from 20 to 80% maybe in 40 minutes here, or you could go from 20 to 60 in 30 minutes or, or top up. But you could also go over there and probably achieve a 47, 48 kilowatt charge in uh, a longer period of time. But if you're gonna go and have something to eat and you don't mind spending a few more minutes, it saves a lot of money. So it really depends on what you're trying to achieve and how much of a rush you're in. You could even go to you know one of the other polar chargers in the area or choose somewhere else to go and have something, some food. You don't necessarily have to stop here. Um, so it is well worth considering the options because there, there are other ways of charging and saving money. The final thing I would say is that uh, you can find much faster chargers for less money as well. The Shell network, 150 kilowatt chargers and the BP network are a lot cheaper, um, half the price. So that would be my recommendation is Ionity as a Polestar driver is, is not really worth using. It's nice to know they exist because that can get you out of a difficult situation if you find yourself needing to charge fairly quickly. Um, and the great thing is that they, they seem to be very reliable and that there are a lot of locations. So say here, you know, there's six charging points, which is great. So I hope this video has been useful, um, new, new experience for me, and it's nice to try out something different. So please like, share, subscribe, do all of those things, and uh, I'll be back again with another video very soon. Thank you.